God has some very strong words of condemnation for the priests, both in the first reading and in the gospel. That's why I'm going to ch- preach about the psalm today. So I'll actually come back around to them. But maybe think about something, a phenomenon called uh, actual empathy and potential empathy, if you've ever heard of those terms. One time I was visiting my brother and his family. They have uh, four children between the ages of two and seven. And we were just in the backyard, and the kids were always running around, getting in trouble, just wrestling and playing sports. And at one point, uh, they were playing catch. And this boy, Frankie, who's like four years old, five years old, was running on, on kind of the asphalt out there. And he tripped, and he fell pretty hard, right? And you just saw him kind of lean up, and his whole being, you know, it's like when kids are about to really cry, like they take that five minutes to take that breath in and just scream. And, but before he could get it out, my brother looks at me and goes, Frankie, Frankie, the ball, the ball. And he was just about to cry, and he kind of looks up. He goes, go out, and I'll pass you the ball. And, and it just, it was almost like it shocked him out of himself, right? And then he looks, and he gets up, and then he runs over, and my brother throws him the ball, and he catches it, and he's really happy. You know, and, and he's limping, and he goes back with the other kids, but he was really happy, he caught the ball, and he got through that. But then, like, a few minutes later, my uh, brother's wife comes out, his, his mother, and as soon as she came out and sat with us, Frankie was still had his ball and he was still talking about his catch, but he kind of put the ball down and he just ran over to his mother and he sat on her lap and he showed her like his cuts on his leg and just like cried with her for a second, you know, and she consoled him and then he got up and he went back and he started playing football again. And this was a, this was an image to me of this actual and potential empathy. And you could, it's easy to look at that and be like, well, the father was dismissive, right? The father didn't care about the kid's suffering, and the mother was was really attentive to what he needed at that time. Or, you know, the father lacked compassion and the mother was there. But these are actually two forms of the same empathy. Empathy, caring for the needs of another. Women, mothers, naturally express what's called actual empathy. So a mother, her whole being is geared towards the good of the child here and now in the present moment. So when a child falls, The mother's natural inclination is, how can I care for you right now? What does the dad usually say? Like, throw some dirt on it, kid. You know, get up, go. And uh, that can seem like it's not very, you know, uh, thoughtful of the kid's needs at that time. But that's called potential empathy. And what the father is trained to do is prepare the children for the future. And so what he's really saying is, there's going to be times when you fall down. When life's going to be hard and we're not going to be there. And if you're not able to pick yourself up from that and keep going, you're just going to stay on the ground and you're going to miss the game. So both are very important to a natural, healthy development of a child. They need the mother's love in the present moment. If you just had a father in the household who's always saying, stop crying about your wounds and just keep going after the ball, go after the next game, kids grow up and they haven't really received the compassion and the love that they need. They always feel like they need to do more and perform in order to be seen and to be valued, right? But on the other hand, if you don't have fathers in the house, or if you don't have that potential empathy, then everything's about the present need of the child. And so they, then it's almost like that analogy. They just fall on the ground, cry about their wounds, and they never move forward. So both dynamics are really important in the life of children to feel the love of the parent in the present moment, but also the call to move on and keep going in the midst of life's struggles. And God expresses both forms of love for us. Right? He, expre- he ex- definitely expresses the potential empathy of the Father. You know, that's, that's the following the commandments or else. Right? The avoiding sin, going to confession, take up your cross, follow after me. Um, So he tells us we must follow his commandments and and embrace the sufferings that come with life. And that's what he's also doing to the Pharisees. If you don't change your way, acting for human glory and the good of this world and to be seen, then a great chastisement will come upon you. That's actual potential empathy. Saying if you don't change your ways, something bad is going to happen in the future. But he also expresses the empathy, the the actual empathy of the mother. Come to me, all you who labor, and I will give you rest. 
Abide in me as I abide in you. Behold, I make all things new in you. Right? He cures people. He listens to them. He walks with us. He suffers with us. He consoles us, especially in the cross and in the Eucharist. He is here present with the consoling love of a mother. And that's exactly what today's psalmist really expresses. It's the experience of God's actual empathy, that maternal love and compassion in the present moment. I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child, like a child on its mother's lap. So is my soul within me. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. So he compares his experience of God to that of a child in its mother's arms, without a care in the world, because God is present to him, protecting him. It's empathy in the present moment. And if we, if we don't experience both forms of God's love, we also can grow up um, malnutritioned in the heart, in a sense. Like, if, if we're more prone to always talk about what it means to be a Christian is to do the moral obligations and to pray our rosaries, to, do, to go to Mass on Sundays, right, and to not, not go for false ideologies of the world, that's all good and that's necessary because there's, there's true punishments that come along with, with failing to heed those calls. But if I'm not experiencing the consolation of God in the present moment, His presence to me, then I'm going to grow up thwarted in my relationship with God. We need that maternal aspect of God's present mercy in our life, consoling us exactly where we are in the present moment. And I know I've been uh, accused of times of more expressing the masculine aspects of God, the potential empathy, like following commandments, you know, stop sinning, go to confession, you can't follow ideologies. And I'm a man. I don't know what to tell you about that. I'm, I'm a man. I live with men. I like cigars and motorcycles. I have a righteous beard that's not going to come off for $10,000, you know. And I don't listen to K-pop. So I really express the strong masculine elements. But I understand that about myself, and I try to compensate, right? So I understand, you know, what the gifts I bring. So I'm like, I need to bring around myself people who really express the maternal aspects of God. People who are really in tune with the mother's heart, with that feminine love and compassion and empathy. You know, people like Alberto, right? That's, that's, why, that's why I bring him here. That I told him I'd get him back for something he said earlier. So I, I have to admit, I, I sometimes go to Alberto's office and he's like, do we have a meeting on something? I'm like, no, I just need a hug right now. I'm feeling a little sad. So he, he's that man in this. But we also have all of the focus missionaries here, a lot of the women here are there for that aspect too. And to me, like that's the most important thing of me providing the sacramental realm. Every time you go to confession, it's not a time of judgment. That is actual empathy in the present moment. This is where I'm hurt. This is where I'm wounded by the world, by my sins. And you get God's mercy in that present moment. Every time we come to the Mass, receiving the Holy Eucharist, the presence of God right now, that's actual empathy. But a lot of preaching is geared towards we need to live a certain way in order to be receptive to God's present presence in the moment. And I think the problem with the Pharisees is they didn't experience God's actual empathy. Like we all need to be seen in our lives. We all need to be valued and feel like we're, we're understood and loved and cared for. And oftentimes when we don't experience that from God, what we'll end up doing is doing a lot of external things like big prayer ropes or vestments or public fasting. And then Jesus says, so that they would be seen by others. I'm doing the right things externally. Therefore, I'm validated. And I, that's a temptation for all of us. We all need to be seen, known, and loved where we are. But if we don't get that from God, if we don't experience that maternal love in the present moment, we can just do religious things on the external to be seen, but not have it go really into our hearts. Right? So the word intimacy means into me see. We need others to see us through and through. It would have been wrong for Frankie to just pick up that ball, keep going, and 
never talk about, you know, not, not get that consolation of the present moment. And I think sometimes with those who, we're all in different places. Like, if you're still, some of us are wounded, right? We've gone through traumas in life, and it's, we're just stuck. And no matter what, we're not moving forward. It might be time to get up and just go after the ball again. It's like, what are the next steps I need to do in life so I can just keep moving? Yes, my leg is busted right now. Yes, it hurts, but I got to go after something. Others, you know, if the faith is becoming more just things I have to do, boxes I have to check off, and I'm not feeling the consolation and the mercy and the, the love of God in the present moment, well, maybe that's a call for me to spend more time of intimate prayer with God because we need absolutely both. And the thing is, if we do not experience the love of God in the present moment in our life, if we do not experience the gaze of Christ with us, that is exactly where the devil comes to us to tempt us to believe that God is just a taskmaster, that he's an absentee landlord, like telling us to, to do all the commandments or else he won't let us into heaven with him. That's why everyone, if you ever had that WWJD bracelets, we're going to have a bonfire after Mass and we'll burn them all. Because it's never about what would Jesus do. It's what is Jesus doing in your life right now. We're not alone. He is here. And the experience of Christ's presence with me in my life, seeing me, knowing me, loving me here, is absolutely essential to our proper development as Christians. When I was in Blackfoot doing ministry one time, I was doing a rosary walk and I walked by this house and there's these two guys sitting on the front porch and they're like late 20s, early 30s. And they called me over and we just started having a conversation. They asked what I was doing there and said I was a priest in the area. And they, uh, one of the guys just, they, they were drinking. So I think he was feeling a little verbose and he's like, do you want me to tell you why I don't believe in your God? I was like, Right, yeah, I would love to hear that. That's why I came over here. And I was like, can I have a beer too so I can get something out of it, please? So um, we, uh, we had a good conversation. And, uh, but at one point, he, he did have a hard life. You know, like his, his father left his family. His mother had to raise him on their own. So he didn't have his mother's consolation in his life because she was too busy just trying to make ends meet for all the kids, right? And uh, he had people die in his life. And he just said, I've never felt God's presence I don't see it. All he ever says is, you must do this, must do that, basically. But while he was talking, his son walked out of the house. And his son was probably like four years old. And his son walked over and sat in his lap. And I have no idea to this day what his son said. But he just held his hand up to, he whispered in his father's ear. And his father said, where? And he just held up his hand. And the father kissed his hand and just held him in his arm for a moment. He said, is it okay now? Yeah, it's okay. He goes, okay, go back in the house. And right then, to me, that was a revelation of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what this young man had never experienced from God. He never knew the kiss of the Father, the one who sees his pain and responds to it. Every single one of us needs that experience. And Christ was condemning the priests because what they were doing wasn't for God. It wasn't inviting God into a deep relationship with him. It was just checking off boxes. And little by little it became just, I'm doing this because everybody else is watching me. And it's an expectation of my life. So real question for us today is, where do you experience that actual empathy of God? God in your life, talking to you, seeing you, where you can share your heart with him and receive his response. Because I promise you guys, like it's so beautiful to see so many of you come into Mass. But it doesn't happen this way. It's not enough just to go to Mass once a week and experience the presence of God. There's too much talking, there's too much movement, there's too much coughing, because there's too much incense. So there's a lot going on during that, that experience. So we need to take the time to pray outside of that. And every Eucharist, that is the kiss of God for us. It's the kiss of Christ to every single one of us. And to the more, to the degree that we understand what he is giving us. I don't care if you receive on the hand or you receive on the tongue or kneeling on the tongue. 
But if you do not understand and believe with everything that you are, that you are receiving Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist, it does no good. There's no grace being conferred. It's my understanding and my receptivity of what I am receiving that gives me the grace of what God is offering in that moment. And when we recognize that, that's when we can have this, that experience of that psalmist. I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child, like a child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. 